Good evening. Welcome, all of you, especially welcome to Her Excellencies, Madam President, and your family. We certainly welcome all of you to this occasion of honoring the life of Donna Gregory Clark. An incredibly li incredible life, well lived, lived on purpose, lived with incredible meaning, and today we want to celebrate that. I think one of the greatest meaning that she brought to the earth was the two daughters that certainly are representation of the incredible purpose that she would be remembered for. Because one thing that we can't forget is that our children are always the legacies that we leave on earth when we go. And today we celebrate that legacy that she has left. And it is because of this that we, all of us, represent her today for the great life that she lived and the great life that she, for all of us, touched us. So let us stand together for a moment of silence, just to honor, number one, her presence on the earth, but secondly, her passing, because she is truly a matriarch that gave her life for her children and for her friends and her community. Father, we pause to reflect on the life well lived, a life lived on purpose, a life lived with meaning, a life that gave us meaningful experiences, a life that gave all of us meaningful moments, a life that gave us meaningful value and meaningful experiences that we all today celebrate. We celebrate the life of Donna, who touched us in so many ways. We celebrate her first as a mother, as a sister, as a grandmother, as an aunt. Lord, as a friend to so many of us, as a fellow believer, fellow worker in the kingdom of God, we celebrate her. We celebrate her contributions, the impact that she made in so many ways with her prayer and intercession, with her simple, her simple presence, infectious presence that she brings wherever she goes that she brings wherever she visits. So today, we give you thanks. Our hearts are full of gratitude to you for all that this gift brought to us. Thank you for the gift of daughter Gregory Clark. Thank you for the gift to her family. Thank you for the gift to her community to her place of employment. Lord, thank you for the gift to her society and to larger Barbados. And thank you, Lord, that she made such an impact on us that today we want to thank you because all good gifts comes from above. So we honor you today, Father. We give you thanks. We give you praise. And we give you glory for all that you have done through her life in her life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The scripture proclaims that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide and remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty whose power no force no enemy can withstand. 
I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him. I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Then he will cover you with his feathers, his pinions, and under his wings you will trust and find refuge. His wings you will trust in. His truth will be your faithfulness and they will be like a shield and a buckler to you. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor the arrow that plots or slander the wicked or that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction and the sudden death that surprises you or lay waste at noonday, a thousand may fall at your right hand, and ten thousand may fall at your left, but they will not come down you. Only you will become a spectator. You will become a spectator and a witness to the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your dwelling place, then no evil will befall you, nor any plague or calamity will come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge over you to accompany you and defend you and preserve you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent shall you trample on the foot because he has set his love upon me, says the Lord. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name. He has personal knowledge of my mercy and love and kindness and grace and trust and he relies on me. Knowing I will never, never forsake him. No, never. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him with long life and I will honor him and I will satisfy him with my entire salvation, says the Lord. That's the promise of God to the family and to all of us today who are grieving and who are experiencing loss today. God is here to mend our broken hearts, mend the pieces that have been broken away from us and to give us a sense of wholeness through this funeral. And after this funeral, we can walk away feeling whole and transformed by the grace and the power of the living God. Amen? Amen. We sing our first song. It's a very powerful song. How great is our God. It's in your hymn sheet. And we sing it with all our might as we tell God how great he is for giving us a great gift. Amen? Isn't God deserved to be told how great he is for the great gift that he has given us? Amen? Come on, let's clap our hands together for the great gift that God has given us in the form of Donna. Oh, it's incredible.
Incredible tribute to God for the gifts that He has given us. Amen. Remarkable God, incredible God that does all good things and He will always do good to us. And whatever happens to us will always work out for our good. Amen. Because that's what, that's what He is a good God. Amen. We have tributes at this time by Chanis. And Shanice, sorry, Shanice, and Jacqueline, Shanice, sorry. Good evening, everyone. Tributes to Donna Maria Gregory Clark. Today, we're here to celebrate the life of Donna Maria Gregory Clark daughter, mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, niece, cousin, friend, encourager, prayer warrior, woman of God. The following tributes present a clear picture of the kind of person Donna was, a woman who loved and knew she was loved. Daughter Cornelia, what can I say about my mother? She was a mix of fun and sarcasm. 
Even in serious situations, there was a joke to be told. While she had, fun, while she had a fun side, she also had the mum side. Push you to the best while also pushing you to the edge. I'm going to miss you calling me asking if I'm bringing a ham cutter from Seoul gas station or if Stoke gas station had pigtails. I'm going to miss you a lot. I love you. Amana, my mother was one of the strongest, bravest, loving, caring, sarcastic, selfless, kindest person to ever grace this earth. Without her, I would not be here. I would not be who I am today and there is no way I can quantify the importance she held in my life. I remember when I found out I was pregnant with Zai and she did not speak to me for a good two days. And every time she passed me, she would look me up and down and just hmm. <laughs> Eventually, she got over it and never missed a doctor's appointment and made sure my lunch bag could not close. The day I went into labor, I was telling her I was in pain, but truthfully, I was complaining the last few weeks of my pregnancy and she was over my nonsense but I remember going to the bathroom and screaming, mommy, mommy, come, and her reply was, what now? In the most annoyed tone. At the hospital, she was more comfortable than I was, and when my daughter was born and my baby left the room, so did my mother. And from then until the day she passed, she cherished and loved Zai like no other. And I am so glad that I was able to witness such love for Zai to feel the love she gave me. My mother sacrificed so much to make sure that my sister and I have the life that we do with the knowledge that she gave us. She always put us before her. She made me see myself through her eyes. She helped me through every storm and walked with me through every rainbow. As I got older, she taught me the importance of being anxious for nothing and to always pray. She became my best friend who I knew I called any time of the day and she would always answer. Anyone who has ever met my mom knew how sh she lit up a room without saying much and how she always cracked a joke in the most serious situations and how she always had wine at home because it was always 12 o'clock somewhere. I can go on and on about how much an amazing person she was, but every one of you already know this. So to you, Donna Maria Gregory Clark, my hero, my best friend, supporter, my confidant, my business partner, my mother. Thank you for being love. Thank you for being you. I love you forever and ever. From Brother Dwayne, I have two memories that are always at the front when Donna comes to mind. The first is how she inadvertently started Chris and I working together on cars on weekends. Chris passed by while I was changing, changing the transmission on Donna's first Mitsubishi Lancer. And working together, we finished what I had planned to be a two-day job with what tools I had to half day. And this wound would not be in no way the last job we did Donna's Lancers. She had three of them besides the fact that we would have to pressure her in a way that felt like bullying to buy the service parts for her cars. We noticed that even though her cars missed services, they never had major issues. Parts we would change on other cars, including other Lancers, never showed signs of breaking on her cars. With her second Lancer, the black one, we were doing a forced service. This was a service where she popped home from work and we took the, no and we took the, the notice the radiator had a leak. We took it out and closed the bonnet. We identified it being as an easy fix we could do ourselves. Well, in the backyard, we heard the car start. Chris and I looked at each other saying, maybe it's another car that started up. We then heard the car reverse and take off across the road at speed. Donna was late as usual. Thank God for cell phones. I called and as calmly as I could, asked her to please return the car as there was no radiator in it. The car made it back from what was a three mile distance and Donna saying nothing is wrong. It's driving very good. Chris would tell her whatever car she buys in life, it has to be a Mitsubishi Lancer. I can hear her now saying, that's the blessings of Jesus who has always promised her riches and peace. My other memory is of her always reminding me that she was the last child for 15 years when along I came bringing the question and reality that Ira and Evelyn had time to do certain things they shouldn't be doing anymore in her estimation. Whenever she told someone her age, she was usually wrong. I would do the quick math. 
and give her correct age 15 years my senior. I will miss our quick calls that ended in hours ranging from family to religion and science. I miss and love you, sis. From her colleague, Nadine Till from Codrington School. Donna was a peaceful, cheerful soul. We worked together for eight years. And in that time, I observed that no matter the situation, she always find a way to come weeks Right, back to the place of faith. She never complained when things were good, she praised God. When things were not so good, she trusted him to work it out. There was no room for doubt. We would often talk about God's goodness and about his word. In one conversation, we were amused on the reality of walking into a room of strangers and being hated even before we said a word. Donna pointed to me this scripture, 2 Corinthians 2, 2, 16. To those who are perishing, we are dreadful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, we are a living, we are life-giving perfume. In other words, she reminded me, she reminded me that darkness never lights the light, since the light reveals what is done in darkness. The light need not say a word. It just needs to show up and the darkness comes face to face with its true nature and its ultimate demise. Donna was a deep thinker. She was also a kind and loving friend. She comforted me in one of my saddest moments and would not let me leave empty handed if I visited her home. She was always willing to share. A few months before she passed, we took her on a girl's night out. I will cherish that memory of her laughing and enjoying the good company full of life full of gratefulness. She saw more clearly than those who had eyes to see. She will be missed, but by faith and by God's grace, we will meet again. Good evening, everyone. Um, niece Keisha, my dear aunt, though I know that you are with our Father and Lord, it still feels like I will wake up and hear you say, my chunky Brazilian niece, I love you. Though it was a nickname, I never understood. It was the greatest endearment I will now come to miss hearing from your lips. Aunt Donna was my second mother. It was always Donna and Keisha from the earliest memories. I have more pictures with her than my own mother. Like me standing next to her in my grandmother's diaper that she told me still didn't make it easy to keep on me. The picture that I automatically think of when I think of her. I mean no, no disrespect to my cousins, but it was me before they came along. I just pray the love, guidance, and prayers she bestowed on us with remains, remain with us. I will miss taking care of Auntie Donna. She would always say, thanks, Key. I'm sorry to be burdened, Auntie Donna would say. It was my pleasure. You could never be a burden. I thank you for being in my life for being a no-nonsense, but yet a jokester. Intercessor and an example of a God-fearing woman. The burden is now that you're gone. Your chunky Brazilian love you always and forever. Nisha Nis, I am still coming to grips that you're gone. I remember conversations about the boys and many times you would sit and just talk about life with a glass of wine, of course. I miss those WhatsApp messages of yours saying a small prayer for me at the end with love you, Shen. You were there for me from birth to dropping me to school at Lodge on mornings and those evening walks when we were younger. First time I'm experiencing this kind of loss so dear to me within a year. Love you always, Auntie Donna. Nish Sharice. Auntie Donna taught me not to, not to save good things for later but embracing them now. I remember eating some food from grandma and I had a piece of pigtail saved at the side to eat when I had finished the rest of the food. Auntie Donna came around, in the, cor came around the corner and took up my pigtail and ate it. I never saved my pigtail for last anymore. Mm -hmm. I will miss you, Auntie Donna. Cousins Juliet Gooding, Michelin, and this is in, from Cayman Islands. I always start how beautiful Donna was. When she was young, I used to say it would all, she would always be a model, she would be a model as she had most beautiful skin. We spoke softly, 
measured and kindly. I think she loved everyone and could look beyond their faults. She was not a pushover by any means, but her tolerance of others were remarkable. A few days before Donna passed away, my daughter brought a pillow to me and asked me where I got it from. It was actually a gift from Donna, from her, from Donna, that she first visited, when she first visited Barbados. The pillow had pictures of my daughter and, and the text that says love. She spoke about the, the pillow and how thoughtful a gift it was. A couple of days later, I had to explain to her that Donna had died. She simply asked why. I'm still wondering why. Donna introduced me to natural medicine. Granted that I'm not always constant, but I find whatever I have medical issues, when I have a medical issue. I first began with my herbal medicines. I used to consult Donna on what herbs work best for what ailments are what the best combination of medications. I have decided not to keep asking why, because I trust that God knows best why he let things happen. However, I will always remember her kindness, her genuine open heart, love of others, and her laugh. I will always remember her thoughtfulness and her determination. Rest in peace, sweet Donna. May the angels carry you safely to your next destination. Love you always, your cousin Juliet. Aunt Marcel. I give God thanks for Donna's life and influence. Looking back now, I'm so glad that I had, I had her over at my house on Christmas Day. It was a comfort to me now that she was gone. She wasn't, she wasn't bubbly nor energetic, but she was a happy, she was happy to be in our company as we were in our in hers. This was the last time I saw her alive. Her death stunned me. Early in the new year, she called and she was so positive. She said, she told God she was tired sitting around the house all day by herself and she was going to begin taking short walks in the neighborhood. That, was, that never materialized. God had greater plans. Perhaps he preferred her to walk in paradise, even dance. Over the years, Donna had was my advisor on, on, on alternative, medicine. alternative medicine advice, which I took and benefited from immensely. She knew the medical value of every plant. She also, she also was a great encourager, too, in the word of God, prayer, and prophecy. After my ordination, ordination as an elder in the Resident Holiness Church last July, Donna told me she was going to bless me with a pair of shoes because as a minister, your feet must be properly clad mm -hmm. as we travel around ministering. I was, too, I was to select the shoes and let her know the cost. Sadly, I never took her up on the offer because she wasn't working at her medical channel to deal with it. Donna's faith was courageous, even though it was a little scary at times. Today I am confident that she is before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ enjoying his presence. Auntie Claudine in Nashville, Tennessee. Since 2019, the pale horse was ridden through our family. Though he was he brought grief, grief, pain. We did not give up because it was not in our genealogy. genealogy. We are not ignorant to, to the leader of his, on his misery, but we also know that our leader is because of his history. He holds onto us the right hand of the strength and comfort us so that we can also comfort others in distress. Our God of comfort never fails, but with us no matter what ails. He will always be there for us since he has past promise. No more tears, no more pain. Suba will be asking where did the time go? The reason too exquisite to explain because we are spending all our time with those who have passed and exclaiming joy, oh joy, oh joy at last. This, the scripture reference, Second Chronicles 2, 3 to 4. Praise be to God and the Father of our of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort 
for who comforts us in all troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we always ourselves receive from God. Reservations 2, 4, and God will write will wipe away our tears from our eyes and there shall be no more death no more sorrow no more crying there shall be no more pain for former things have passed may donna's soul rest in peace and rise in glory um i'm the first niece <laughs> i had a lot of things to say so i couldn't write but i'm really glad that i had the opportunity to say what i have to say right now the first thing that comes when I think about my art is class. And with a C, class. When you see Donna, she was always put together. I always tell people that, you know, the brand names of Lancome and Clarins, people they know, but Donna had it because she always had high standard, high taste, always want the best for herself and everyone around her. I... For my birthday, November the 30th, I went to the home. You know, I was celebrating my birthday. I went out, I got something from Amanda. And she said, wait, Jacqueline, wait. I don't believe that my niece is older than me. <laughs> and that's one thing that I can remember. She never was older than 20 years old. <laughs> and she would be like, you know, what is your age? No, 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 no. 16, eight, never over that age. Legal. <laughs> so I am glad and blessed that she was in my life and she also had a lot of strength because although she was going through all she was going through you never saw she, you never saw her that and we have to take that in consideration you know a lot of people go through a lot of things but you know she had a love of god and our family one thing that from my grandmother taught us the love of god and from that it transcends through our family and that's why we would always think about my grandmother and showing us the love of God and I want all of us to know the love of God it is an extraordinary thing a lot of things I've went through and I have asked God to help me and he did so I know that as long as you ask for help he will do it but thank you again I love you my rose Donna I rest in peace thank you You can clap your hands, it's appropriate. After great tribute, I think that that is appropriate for us to applaud. And we are applauding God for his, great, his gift and the gifts that he has given us. Um, we're gonna stand at this moment and, and sing another song called Jesus, the Waymaker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know she trusted in God. She looked to God. And today we do the same. We lift our eyes to Him. He's the way maker. He is the miracle worker. Jesus, you are
myself and elders of and all the partners of Apostolic Teaching Center, we want to convey our condolences to Donna's special children and her siblings and all her friends and all of those of you who are certainly here because she meant so much to you. We want to convey our condolences and our praise. And especially we want to convey our condolences to Her, Her Excellency, Madam President, in this difficult moment for you. So we want also convey our praise and support for you. Today as a community of believers, children, and Donna's tribe, her friends, we want to celebrate her life. Amen? She was an incredible woman, a good woman. And most of you who have met her know that she was very generous. And that's one of the most outstanding qualities of 
of Donna. She was very generous, very giving, giving of herself, giving of what she possesses. But one of the things that she always gave is that infectious smile that when she met you was very contagious. And I think that was the level of generosity that Donna was a giver of. She was virtuous and it was outstanding in her virtues that she demonstrated in her life, life of her children, life of the believers that she engaged in, and life of her friends. And she was very commendable. She imprinted her values. And you can see it in her children. She imprinted her good qualities in her children. Today you see them. You see the good values and the sense of purpose that they all have because of Donna. So really what she did was create enduring value and meaning in her children that would give them the impetus, the impetus for progress and development. As a woman, she served others by inspiring people and shaping them to become the best versions of themselves in this world. That was incredible. So her life had meaning, incredible meaning. And we want to give God thanks for that gift of meaning that many of you were touched by. You know, one of the things about life is that many people have enough to live by, but nothing to live for. They have the means, but not the meaning. And that is a big challenge we see every day. Our lives are not meaningless or just random. Our lives are not a product of genetics, genes, or a product of our environment. In fact, it is believed that a lot of the mental illness that we see today across the world and in Barbados is happening because of a crisis of meaning. People have lost a sense of meaning and purpose. And as a result, they, they, they clamor for things that give them short-term pleasure but create long-term consequences. And you know what I'm talking about. So when we see the crisis of meaning in our society, it is a cry, a cry for meaning and for purpose. It's an unheard cry for meaning and purpose. Without meaning, everything that you do would become meaningless. You have to start with meaning. And the truth is, the truth is, he who has, listen to this, has a why, a meaning to live for, can bear almost any how what they go through. Whatever you go through, you can bear it, you can deal with it. If you have a why to live for, if you have a purpose to live for, if there's meaning in your life. A meaningfulness is defined by a fundamental sense of purpose that you have in your life, that you know you came on this planet to fit into a slot that God has created for you. And that slot, nobody can fit. Nobody can engage. You don't have to compete with anybody. You don't have to fight any person. You don't have to put down any person to put up yourself. That slot is your slot. And nobody can fit it. That is meaningfulness. When you judge your life as empty and pointless and lacking meaning, it amounts to a crisis of meaning. When you look at Donna, her life had meaning and purpose. And she lived for creating a future that was pleasurable for us who were believers. Because one of the things that marked her life is that she was an intercessor. She was a, 
She was a woman who believed in prayer. Amen? And that made a difference. I tell you, it, it is easy to make a buck. But it is a lot tougher to make a difference. And you can easily make money. But to make a difference calls for sacrifice. And calls for commitment to something that really matters. And she was an intercessor. And as we all know, that the future belongs to the intercessors. To clasp your hands in prayer is the beginning of an uprising. So in a real sense, Donner was a subvertive person. She subverted the present and gave birth to the future. That's what an intercessor does. History belongs to the intercessors, those who believe and pray the future into being. History belongs to the intercessors who believe the future into being. If this is so, then intercession, far from being an escape from action, it is a means of focusing for action and creating action in the world. And that's what Donna did. She made an impact. She created action. She moved the spirit of God to make a difference in the life of her family, in the life of her community, and the life of Barbadians. And we give God praise for this. Amen? You see, what prayer does, it infuses the air of a time yet to be into the suffocating atmosphere of the present. And that's what prayer does. And if you can have somebody who's committed to prayer, it makes a huge difference. We think very often that prayer is not action, but prayer is action. Sometimes we think that people who pray are people who are escaping, but they're, they're, they're not escaping, they're engaging in lethal action for the future. And that's what Donna did. And for this, we want to give God praise for her life because she made a difference made a difference because it only takes a few people to clasp their hands and pray and they can change history. They can change the future of this planet. They can change the future of their family. And they, her family is the way they are today because of her praise and her intercession. Come on, give God praise for this. John, Donna was not only an intercessor, but Donna was a mother. An incredible mother. And we all know that mother's love, mother's love is the fuel that makes ordinary human beings do impossible things. That's the power of a mother's love. And that's what mothers do. When they, 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 they're the ones who always stay wrong, who always nurture, who always provide the context for us to do the impossible. Listen, of one of the persons that God identified himself with is the mother. Listen to the Bible in Isaiah 66, verse 30 says, As a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you, says the Lord. You will be comforted over Jerusalem, says the Lord. Listen to another passage. God likens himself to a mother, and even greater than a mother, but he compares himself to a mother. He says, he says, can a mother forget the infant at her breast? It's impossible. Can a mother walk away from her baby she is born? But even if a mother forgets it, I will never forget you, says the Lord. So I, I want to say in a very humble way, that the mothering that you got from your mother is a taste of God in your life. God was giving you a taste of what he is like. A million times better. But you got a taste of God. Knowing your mother, feeling your mother, embracing your mother, your mother's gift giving birth to you, changing your pampers, and getting rid of all the shit in your life. That is true. That's what a mother does. And helps us to focus on the things that matter in life. And that's the beauty of, of a mother. 
A mother is able to bring the best out of you. Best out of you. Mothers feel a duty to serve others by inspiring and shaping to become the best, the fullest version of yourself. I want to I wanna today celebrate with you a great mother in the life of Donna Gregory Clark. I want to I wanna honor her. You see, wealth, like happiness, is never attained when you seek after it directly. It comes as a byproduct of providing a useful service, meeting a purpose, fulfilling meaning and purpose. Whoever renders service, whoever renders love to many, puts himself or herself in the line for greatness. Great wealth, great returns, great satisfaction, great reputation, and great joy. You know, this is the life that we celebrate today. Donna was an incredible mother. She was an incredible intercessor. And today we celebrate her life. I want to finish, as I usually finish all of my sermons at a funeral with a very familiar story. It's a very profound story that I finish with. And it's a story of a man who dies and he goes to heaven. And of course, he meets Peter at the gate. He meets Peter. Peter is at the gate. And Peter says, here's how it works. This is how it works for us. You need 100 points to make it into heaven. And you tell me all the good things that you have done, and I will give you a certain number of points for each of them, depending on how good it was. When you reach 100, the gates will open and you will go in. The man says, okay, that's easy. I was married to the same woman for 50 years and never cheated on her, even in my heart. Peter said, that's wonderful, says Peter. That's worth three points. Three points? He said, well, listen to this. He says to Peter, I attended church all my life and supported its ministries with all my tithe and with all my services. Peter says, terrific. That's certainly worth one point. One point? Golly, how about this? I started a soup kitchen in my city and worked in a shelter for the homeless, for the homeless veterans. Peter said, my God, that's fantastic. That's good. That deserved two points. I hope you're counting. Two points, the man cries out. At this rate, the only way I can get into heaven is by the grace of God. Peter said, come in then. <laughs> Listen, folk. It's not what you do. It's not what you accomplish. It's not what you make happen. Heaven is a gift. Eternal life is a gift. To be next to God is a gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to manufacture it. You don't have to do anything. It's simply by receiving the gift of eternal life that God has given you. Amen? Amen. And eternal life is to know God and to know his son, Jesus Christ. And to love God and to love his son, Jesus Christ. I want to challenge you today. Within this service, and you don't know Jesus as your savior. You don't know Jesus as your Lord. You don't, you, you don't have an eternal life abiding in you. You can have it as we stand to pray. You can experience eternal life. You can know God today as Donna knew him, as Donna experienced him, as Donna life came to greatest meaning and purpose because she knew God and she experienced the kingdom of God. Stand with me. Just close your eyes for a few seconds. And I want to pray for you. 
And I want to pray especially for those of you who say, I want to receive Jesus into my life. I want to turn my life over to Jesus. I want to receive eternal life today. And if, if, there, if there are some of you in here who feel that way, who desire that, very quickly, just push your hands up and put it back down. You don't have to, I see that, I see that hand, I see those hands. So Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that your grace will be, made, will be made accessible to those persons that raise their hands and that they will experience eternal life through Jesus Christ. They will surrender their lives. I ask you to cause them to surrender their lives to you, to your grace and to your favor and that you would bless them and cause them to experience eternal life. Pray for all of us who are here that your grace will be upon us. The fullness of God will rest upon us. And the grace of God will be upon our lives. And that we will walk before God in truth and in faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say amen. amen. The rest is, would be seated. We want just the family to remain standing while we pray for the family. And then after we finish praying... We're going to take an offering, an offering for the family, for the two daughters. Remember, the offering is for the two daughters. We're going to take a special offering. And we're going to pray that God give you the grace and the favor and the strength to rest upon you. I'm going to pray for the family. Good evening, everyone. Um, as they will say, all protocols observed. And um, before I do that, I just want to say that Donna was a friend, and Donna was loyal, and she was a faithful intercessor. You could count on Donna. I could count on Donna. And I didn't want to um, have this completed without saying I'll miss her. No, the Bible said, do not mourn like those who don't have a hope. Donna has a hope. But it never said don't mourn. So I'm missing Donna. She was a loyal, strong prayer warrior. And I could count on her when I had to travel with my husband to do ministry. Donna would be the one to stay up, help me with the store. And Donna would have wonderful stories to tell me when I come back. Some that were, <laughs> I would have to say, Donna had another side when it came to prayer. It was a little bit on the wild side. And Donna could deal with the level of what we call warfare that I would encounter. And I really appreciated um, her input Amen. into my journey and process and into the ministry's journey and process. And I want to acknowledge that with heartfelt thanks. So now will be a prayer for the family as we bow our heads. Father, we just lift the Clark, the family of Donna, to you, all the siblings, her children, Cornelia Gregory, Clark, Gregory, and Hamana, I'm going to call the first names, uh, Zania, and then her sisters and brothers, Gail, her sister, Dwayne, her brother, Jarvis, Perry, Roy Coffin. Now, if I left out anyone, I think Richard is in there. So I'm praying for all of you, all the nieces and the nephews, Pam, everyone. We are lifting you before God. Amen. Father, we pray for this family. Yes. We pray for this journey that they will have to take with the absence now of a beloved sister and friend and intercessor for her family. We pray, God, that you would 
give them the strength to go forward. Give them the power of your grace to push through in this sad time, this time Amen. of sorrow. Give them, Lord, the joy as they remember Donna in all her glory, in all her graces, and all her funny and classy self. We pray, God, that you will, you will give them the joy that as they mourn, they will not mourn as others do, that they will also remember the yes. joy of Donna. Father, we pray that this will bring hope to them as she was an example of Christ, living in Christ, Amen. that they themselves will follow that example. They will follow her gift of intercession. They will follow her gift of loyalty, her graces, all that they have, all the attributes and behaviors that Donna exhibited that caused them to be lifted, that caused them to bring joy, that caused them to be happy. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that you will give them that strength to see Donna even now as they go through this yes. process of transitioning yes. into a new place, a new normal without the presence of her in their lives. We pray for the strengthening of Cornelia yeah. and the strengthening of Amanda and her, grand, and her daughter, her granddaughter. We pray for the strengthening of the sisters and the siblings. We pray, God, that you would cause them, Lord Jesus, yeah. to be able to release all that needs to be released and to embrace each other in a, a, a new place of knowing that Time is in your hands. Yes. And that it doesn't cost much, but it takes the grace of God to cause that peace to come. And that they will step into a preferred place of peace mm -hmm. and to a preferred place of unity and to a preferred place of bonding. Yes. And that they will step into a preferred place of relating one to another and to release everything all the memories that were not the memories they would want to uh, remember that you will cause them lord to rise to a higher level of unity and rise to a higher level of bonding we pray their feet would be strengthened we pray oh god they, 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 every part of their bodies will be strengthened. The unity within yes. the home will be strengthened. Yes. And the togetherness will be strengthened. Give them good memories, good thoughts, good words, and great appreciation for this great gift that has now left us. Amen. We bless them. We bless them even now. And as they go, we declare the grace of God go with you and strengthen you now and forevermore. Amen. We're going to stand and sing our final song. And as we sing this song, we're going to give Her Excellencies, Madam President, to exit as she desires with her family. in 
the family. I want to give you some time to take I really want you to do, to do your best your best this is not collection this is an offering an offering of gratitude an offering of appreciation for life well lived but more importantly an offering to give our children some level of support as a transition from the unknown to the known. Amen? 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 Amen. So we want you to come up and you give. Come up and you give. So everybody, we want everybody to be involved in the process. Let's go and sing. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship, and the power of the Holy Spirit 
rest and abide with you, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. You may go in peace. Amen. Amen.